What's up with the squad? Back with another video. I see the title is going down. Make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe button for me, please. Y'all seen it in the title. Definitely apologize for getting these videos out a lot uh, late out to y'all. Um, so I apologize for that. And um, you know, I just I've had a night. Um, not even gonna lie. Um, but it, you know, I, all I can do is just you know keep pushing. Um, one thing about it, um, you know, I've been struggling a lot with YouTube and stuff like that. Like um, my views and like stuff like that. I YouTube just been, you know, it's kind of messed up, messing on my channel a little bit. And I just been having other things going on in my life. Um, and I still try to get on here to, you know, put a smile on my face, you know, and do whatever I can, you know, to, I don't know, to, to do better. You know what I mean? Um, I try not to get a sentimental or nothing like that, you know, but um, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, I just go through it. I don't show it, but, you know, um, so I definitely ask if y'all can, you know, Give out a little prayer or something like that. You know, it would definitely help. But uh, let's get in this video. And Sean Curran, per Politico. Curran is a uh, agent seen protecting Trump in his iconic fight photo right here. This guy's like always by Trump's side. They have a uh, great friendship, actually. So when, whenever we saw Trump on the campaign trail, this homie was next to him. So he's obviously very, very trusted by Trump. Uh, Curran uh, has spent years leading Trump's personal detail to become very, very close. Why would Dan, G Dan Bongino be good at this job? Dan Bongino worked for the Secret Service. He also worked for the NY uh, be a good fit. New York Police Department. Started in 1995. Worked there for five years. Uh, Bongino joined the United States Secret Service in 1999 as a special agent in 2002. Uh, he left the New York field office, became an instructor at Secret Service Training Academy in Beltsville, Maryland in 2006. He was assigned to Presidential Protection Division for George W. Bush. He remained on protective duty through Barack Obama, leaving in 2011 to run for U.S. Senate. So this is uh, plus 10 years in the Secret Service. Mm. So Bongino has hell of a pedigree for uh, for this position. Would you approve Dan Bongino as director of the Secret Service? Listen, uh, I think it's a, a very smart move. I've seen Dan Bongino uh, even before and just the way, you know, he talks and the way he, you know, give his thoughts and different things on not only, you know, what happened with Trump, uh, in those two situations or, you know, a few situations, um, there's other things that, you know, he talked about and that made complete sense. And I think he's definitely a great fit for the job. Honestly, Everybody says, yes, he needs to say exactly where he is. The radio show and podcast are huge, incredibly important to the team and to the country. Yes. I just hope he can keep his podcast as well. Then he say, I mean, why not? Why couldn't you do both? <laughs> like, it would be really fun to have him do the podcast from DHS Secret Service headquarters, right? Like, what, what's what, uh, any rules against that? No, of course not. I, I hope that Donald Trump does a podcast with J.D. Vance in the White House, right? Like, do a fireside chat. Like, that's that they should totally do that. Cash Patel, CIA Director, Dan Bugino, FBI Director, good night. FBI Director would be pretty awesome. I think maybe even better than Secret Service. Who's Dan Bugino, the great Trump Secret Service Director? I uh, think... This is from the Donald Trump interview that was done uh, in the lead up to the election that uh, Dan Bongino did live. So according to Real Clear Politics, Dan Bongino is under consideration to be Trump's Secret Service Director. The leading candidate uh, is the man who is in the iconic Trump Butler photo, raising his fist with the bloody ear, Pennsylvania. Okay, well, please let it be Dan Bongino. People are cheering for this, uh, but we don't know yet. We are shout to Dan. We're friendly with him, right? Like, been on, he'd been on our show. We've been on his show. Yeah. So what's it going to be? I don't know. I'd like to see Dan Bongino have a huge role uh, in revamping the Secret Service. I think that, I mean, maybe he can just come in there and do, like, a crack job uh, firing everybody who needs to be firing, fired and implementing yeah. the kind of changes that you need to keep the lady Ghostbusters away from protecting Trump. You remember the people who couldn't even holster their weapons? You remember that? The chicks who were, were like were so short they could never they couldn't cover Trump. I mean, we had a bunch of Secret Service agents come on the show after Trump's assassination attempt and tell us about this. Like, you you have to be able to you have to be able to cover the protectee. Dan Bongino can make great reforms. Dan Bongino is a must listen to on things like this. If he continues this way, he's not going to make it to inauguration day, says Dan Bongino. Bongino had an incredible round of uh, questions and answers. When it came to the assassination investigation via the United States House, some great heroes in Congress 
asking you know questions. And, and I, I don't, I don't like to speak negative or anything. Like you know, as far as like how my channel goes and like stuff like that. But me personally, on how I look at it, is that things need to need to definitely come in place. Um, especially, I think what they say. Uh, I think it's January twentieth. Is it? Is it January twentieth, y'all? If I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, so January 20th uh, for the inauguration. Honestly, obviously, obviously to for his term, but even now until then, things need to be in place. Um, we was just talking about at rallies. Um, he needs to be protected, um, and I pray for him. Uh, Definitely. Uh, of Bongino in this hearing, Dan Bongino's opening statement, though, uh, really, really powerful. Here it is. Well, thanks for your time. Uh, thank you for doing this. Sound okay? Everybody hear me back there? Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Uh, listen, let's just get right to the point. This was an apocalyptic security failure. A man was murdered in front of his family. Three people were shot on live television, including President Trump. And the head who came within two millimeters of having his head explode on national television in front of millions of people. It's no sugarcoating it. It's no time for BS. Unfortunately, as uh, Congressman Crane and Mills both indicated, the story seems to have, have vanquished, have been vanquished to the phantom zone of media coverage. It's amazing how we're still talking about JFK's assassination, uh, but nobody seems to want to talk about President Trump being shot in the head on national television, despite the fact that we have no answers. So I have five minutes, so I want to keep it quick, and I want to make three points. I worked in the Secret Service for 12 years. I loved it. I worked with some really amazing men and women um, who gave everything. I mean, I, I a couple of them literally gave everything. I know guys who've gotten bizarre diseases overseas, like chicken getting you a fever and protection operations. Everybody gave a little bit of something in the Secret Service, and it was a real honor to say I was part of it. But they have three institutional problems, I believe, in the macro uh, will help us get to the bottom of how this uh, Secret Service apocalyptic failure won't happen again. First, they have a technology problem. The joke in the Secret Service, which is just sadly no longer funny when I was there, and it wasn't funny then either, is uh, they rely on yesterday's technology tomorrow. Think about that. <laughs> yesterday's technology tomorrow. Everything from computer systems that waste agents' times, filling out time and attendance records they were doing, to uh, Congressman Crane and I discussing the fact that they only implemented slings, a technology as old as the wheel, uh, about, I don't know, five or six years into my time in the Secret Service, which is embarrassing. The weaponry was old, everything was old. These are things I would have talked about sooner if they didn't create a security crisis, and I obviously didn't want to air them publicly. Now you're seeing what happens when you don't have a drone up at a site you could have bought for $39.99 on Amazon. Second, mm. um, another adage in the Secret Service you've heard even the new acting director discuss is the more with less approach. There is no more with less. There's less with less, okay? Uh, the Secret Service more with less approach only works if you produce more. That's how capitalism works. You produce a flat screen TV that was probably 20 years ago, $10,000. It's 200 bucks at Walmart now. They produce a better TV with less. That's not what the Secret Service did. They produced less with more. They were given more money and produced less. A 20-year-old criminal outsmarted them on a $40 drone technology piece of device. You're telling me that's more with less? That's disgusting. That's, not, that's nothing with less. That's less with more. Their mm. budget went up. You guys know you're appropriators. You know that. Third, and I'll wrap it up with this, turn it over to Mr. Prince. The investigative mission, the Secret Service, that they're telling you they need to make them better agents is total crap. That's garbage. Their agents are, are, are talented, smart people. They can figure out how to do protection without running out cheap $20 counterfeit notes at 7-Eleven on a Friday night while the president's getting shot in the head. How is it we have a DEA, we have an FBI, we have TIGTA, the IRS, CBP, and a thousand other entities with a $6 trillion budget, which I, I know a lot of you guys have been fighting against this grotesque spending. $3 billion goes to the Secret Service, and we're wasting time running out counterfeit notes. It's a serious problem, counterfeiting. Granted, it might be a legacy item. They started doing counterfeiting. That's not what we do now. Get rid of the investigative mission, turn it over to other people, let them do what they do best and should do best protection thanks a lot for your time thank you for doing this thanks to the panelists hey i feel like that speaks that speaks a lot and honestly i wouldn't be surprised if trump picked him i honestly think that would be the smartest thing to do 
just based off of him already having the experience on what should have happened, this, that, and the other, everything makes sense to me. You know, it definitely makes sense to me. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I think that'll be a great fit. Um, <clears throat> just the way of how things should be set out. I think he obviously needs to be um, the Secret Service director. Um, and honestly, I I don't know why he ain't, you know, already, you know, Um because I think, you know, it, it, it definitely is a smart move. Y'all let me know y'all comments and thoughts down below. Definitely appreciate y'all. Much love to y'all. Um, definitely stay tuned for the next two video. Well, the next video drop tonight. I won't drop two tonight. Uh, but y'all already know. Catch y'all next one.